Hey Transformers fans, back again. Got another figure for uh, you to take a look at today. Really excited to get this guy in hand. Uh, you know, very, very lucky that uh, he finally started hitting shelves um, in my area. The uh, Voyager class, Studio Series, Megatron from uh, Revenge of the Fallen, um, uh, the movie. And whoa boy, is this uh, figure ever deliver on you know, everything that uh, the collectors have been wanting him to be ever since they first teased the pictures, you know, when they uh, when they started showing uh, more of the Studio Series line. I mean, he is perfect in robot mode. He is absolutely perfect. Um, you know, the sculpting is incredible. Uh, very, very happy to have him in hand. Now, before I get to that, obviously going to go through uh, the basic stuff. You know, the packaging, uh, Studio Series packaging, standard class. And as many people have mentioned, he is a big Voyager. Like, he fills the box, you know, like on some, unlike some of the other ones where there's a lot of empty space. This guy takes up, like, the whole thing. So he is definitely a big Voyager, as he should be. Nice picture of Megatron's face on the side of the box there. As you can see, he's number 13 in the line. Nice angry picture of Megatron on the side there. And then on the back, you can see his uh, really funky... Um, you know, evil looking Cybertronian robot mode, his big claw, his tank mode that he had in Revenge of the Fallen. Um, and as it says here, forest fight, you know, this is how he looked when the, he engaged in that amazing, uh, you know, epic battle in the forest with Optimus and, you know, Starscream and uh, Grindor uh, in that movie. And that, you know, to me is one of the best fight scenes in all of the Bay series movies. So to have Megatron represented the way he looked like in that scene, um, is really cool. I mean, there's the other wave mates, you know, wave, uh, or sorry, um, figure number 12 is Brawl, um, Optimus and Starscream are the other Voyagers that we've, um, that we've got our hands on so far. So, uh, you can kind of see them there, but that's it for the packaging. His instruction manual is the same as all of the other ones. You know, it's a fold out, um, you know, strip of instructions with the, the pictures and whatnot. There is one, instruction here step number 27 that i will call out when i do the transformation because it's not very clear on what it is that you're supposed to do there but um, once you figure out what they're asking you to do it makes the transformation a lot easier and it helps that things tab in better when he's in uh, vehicle mode so that's it but let's talk more about the figure itself because this guy i mean figure collectors or transformers collectors ever since they saw the the pictures of this guy have been going crazy and for good reason i mean he is the definitive looking, I mean, that is exactly the CGI model in, in toy form, in robot mode. I mean, he just looks fantastic. Um, he's got the big claw, he's got the cannon molded in there. You know, he's got his kind of like other mangled hand, um, you know, that kind of put together from other Decepticons. You know, he's got his big chunky thighs. He's got his treads that split at the toes that are his feet. You know, he's got that great evil looking head sculpt, bright red eyes. You know, he's got the thrusters on the back, um, you know, on the legs too. Uh, everything about it is exactly the way it should look. And it's just really, really nice to see this level of detail and attention to screen accuracy in Megatron finally, because, you know, we've had several Megatron figures over the years. None of them come close to this guy in terms of whether or not he actually looks like the way he did on screen. This nails it. Uh, my only main complaint at this point, and it's something that I'm going to remedy, is the uh, the finish on him. Now, when I say finish, I don't mean like, oh, it's crummy plastic or it's, you know, bad quality or whatever. Like, he feels heavy. He feels solid. It looks like it's good quality plastic and all that stuff. The problem is, is that they molded him in this kind of drab gray plastic. And as we all know, Megatron should, Megatron should be shiny silver you know, a little bit, you know, rough finish, but you know, he, he should be silver. So this is going to be a big repaint for me. I'm going to do it. Um, I wanted to get this review done before I started repainting it so that, uh, you know, I could do even like, kind of like a before and after. Um, but this guy will be shiny and silver and look awesome, um, in short order because I really, really want to get him done up the way that, uh, you know, I think he should be done. Um, but other than that, I mean, like there are lots of good paint apps, like he's got lots of this kind of goldy bronze, stuff uh you know inside his chest cavity and and especially on the side in his tank wheels and treads like the finishes are pretty nice and he does have some gunmetal accents you know kind of throughout in the thrusters and in these pieces here um you know in the cannon he's got the the cannon itself is painted a gunmetal 
So there's not like a lack of paint on them. It's just the plastic that they chose doesn't have any kind of metallic sheen or shine to it. So I got to fix that. Um, it, he does have a, a little bit of articulation in his fingers. I thought that was, you know, really kind of cool. Like they actually have, these are two separate pieces that can pivot independently. So you can kind of get him, you know, manipulating his fingers like he does certain certain parts of the movie where he's like, ah, oh, so that's kind of cool. And then on the other hand, I didn't notice this until I got him out of the box, but there is another finger on the cannon side. So there is like a, a, an articulated thumb finger on the other side. So it almost does like a work like a hand when you've got the claw flipped away and the claw does, you know, flip away. It tucks in nice and neatly. It doesn't stick hanging, like hanging out a mile at the back. You know, it folds in very, very nicely and then folds out into the perfect kind of proportion for his giant claw. So that looks really, really nice. Um, kind of getting him to stand is a little bit tricky sometimes because the legs are, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of these folded up things. So, you know, this extends if you want to make his leg longer and then he does have an ankle pivot, which is nice. Um, but just trying to get everything positioned so that, you know, his toes are open and he's got the weight position and, you know, he looks balanced you know, can be a little tricky, but I'm sure the more I play around with it, the the easier it'll get to get him positioned um, properly. But, you know, he does, he looks really, really nice. And there's no kibble at all. <laughs> I'm sure you'll notice that, that once you get him out, there's no pieces of robot hang or pieces of vehicle hanging off of him anywhere. Everything looks the way that it should. Um, it's, it's just really, really well done. I like it. Uh, to do a couple of size comparisons, I'm going to do some different size comparisons because, I mean, everybody always shows them off next to his wave mates, you know, like Starscream and, uh, you know, and Decepticon Stinger and all of these other guys that have come out with the Studio Series line. Um, since you've seen all of that stuff, I'm going to show them next to a few different, different figures that I think, um, you know, really uh, give you a better idea of how he scales. So first and foremost, I want to scale him next to what I think is probably the finest Voyager class Optimus Prime. Um figure that we've got in previous movie lines. I know that some people say that, you know, evasion class or evasion mode is the better one. And all, you know, I mean, everybody has different opinions, but to me, this one looks the best because it's got the most amount of detail um, in terms of how he looked on screen and the transformation is very fun. And I just think you get overall a really nice looking movie prime. And these two scale really, really well together. I like this scale better than the scale that I've seen with the new studio series prime. Um, because in my opinion, the studio series prime, I know that, you know, technically they say that he's supposed to be per scaled proportionally to what Megatron is, but in my opinion, this looks better. You know, Megatron should be bigger, but in my eyes, I just don't see him being, you know, another, you know, half an inch bigger than what prime was. Um, it's just, this to me looks better. This is what I wanted for my shelf and this is what I got. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Your mileage may vary, but I think they look really, really nice together. I've also got my other prime, my other, the other really awesome um, Voyager class prime that we got. And as you can see, he's been all done up with the stickers and paint um, to make him look really nice. But last night, Voyager prime is pretty nice too. And again, he scales well um, with these, you know, he should be a little bit shorter, but um, I think that's, that works really, really good. And just for one other prime, why not? Let's bring in evasion mode prime just to show him off next to all these three. So I think overall that looks really cool. Like, I mean, he's, he's a perfect size for the other Voyager movie bots that we've got. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show off is not just Megatron next to all my primes, but Megatron next to all, all my other Megatrons. And I got two other movie Megatrons that I want to show off. So there he is next to the Dark of the Moon Voyager and the Last Night Voyager. Um, now, before I got the last night Voyager, this guy was my favorite movie Megatron. You know, better in my opinion, better than the leader classes before and the and the other Voyagers that we had before. This was just my favorite Megatron figure. Then once I got this guy, this guy became my favorite movie Megatron figure because he just looked really, you know, proportionally. He was really nice. Uh, you know, great paint apps and looked very accurate to what he did in the movie. So I still love all of these ones, but you know, this one was my favorite. Now this one was my favorite. And now this guy is definitely my favorite because I mean, he just looks so much more imposing overall. I mean, he's, he's just absolutely a perfect representation of that figure from that movie. So I really dig it. So he's definitely kind of taken the, the, the lead in terms of my favorite movie Megatrons. But as you can see, I just wanted to get you an idea of how they all scaled together. 
Obviously, the darker the moon is the smallest in terms of like height. Uh, this guy is a little bit shorter. Um, the last night version is a little bit shorter. Um, but then this guy, because he's such a big voyager, he's he's definitely uh, definitely the tallest out of the group. So that's the size comparisons that I wanted to do. Um, you know, I mean, you've seen dozens of other size comparisons with, you know, Studio Series Starscream and all that other stuff. So I'm not going to bother. But um, he's his robot mode is absolutely perfectly shaped, proportioned, scaled. No complaints there. Now, when we get into transformation, there are a couple of things that, you know, make it a little bit tricky and um, that, you know, it just helps to, to know um, from experience, I guess, how to, how to get it done. I didn't watch enough videos of the transformation to learn them ahead of time, so I kind of had to figure that out on my own, and the instructions, you know, are only so much help. Um, but transforming him is relatively simple, provided you know these, these couple of tricks. So you just kind of first start by collapsing the toes. That's an easy one and then kind of get the arms out of the way. And then grab, basically you grab the, the foot of the leg and just kind of pull it to straighten all that out. So you can see like this is gonna be the bottom of the treads that he's rolling on. This folds down like that. This kind of just stays out of the way for now. And then this piece folds up on like a double hinge like that. This piece here, you're gonna to wanna to tuck it underneath the tread so that it's, it's like that. And one other thing that I noticed is these things pop off really, really easily. So don't be surprised if you pick them up and you, you try and adjust his leg and all of a sudden this piece is in your hand. You know, they just pop on and off. I'm going to see if I can maybe tighten that up a little bit, but, um, you know, they do, they're just a friction fit and they just pop on and off real easy. So just be aware of that. Um, then come over here and do the other leg, same way, fold that down, fold that up, get that out of the way pull that down and then there we basically have the legs ready to ready to go um, next thing is uh, you want to pop the shoulders out so these things kind of fold out like that out of the way I just kind of keep them there um, one thing actually I want to call this out um, and I know who to credit for this because um, I know that uh, he I learned it from his video and I'm pretty sure that his video learned it from somebody else so if you want to know the original original person who who shared it then go back and check it out but from Optobotamus's review of this guy um, I saw that he talked about these cannons that are on his back here these two twin cannons things and how in the instructions it kind of shows you that it's sticking up over his shoulders like that and he is he mentions that oh i don't remember him seeing the, you know seeing him have those in the movie and i don't remember seeing him have those in the movie either so um and one of the other complaints that people have is that he's got this giant hole through his body which i mean sure i guess if you're looking at him sideways it's there's a bit of a hole there but it's a pretty minor gripe considering how awesome the rest of the figure is um, but, uh, in the Optobotamus' video, he happened to show that, you know, if you take these, um, cannons, you can kind of manipulate them. If you just sort of bend them out a little bit, you can kind of manipulate them so that they fit down across that cavity of his, of his torso. And then everything still kind of pegs in nicely, but it gives you something to kind of fill in a little bit of that gap. And it makes it look, you know, I don't know if it's like a piston or a support or something in his chest, but it just fills it in a little bit better and, and makes it look makes it look a little bit more solid, I guess. So that's what I'm doing with mine because I thought it was a really good idea. So anyway, pop the arms out. You kind of straighten the head out because it's going to stick out like that. And pop out the, fold out the, the rest of the, the upper body or the back. And put these things back in position up there. And then this kind of um, snaps into place, kind of lock it into place. And then this just kind of sits up there for now. Uh, next thing you're going to want to do is rotate the legs 180 degrees. Like that. And then this is where it kind of got a little bit tricky, but you pull out and hinge down the hips. So that they look like that. Okay, now, uh, now you gotta do the arms. So the arms kind of fold in, collapse on the inside, and what you'll see is there's a little tab there on the one side. You know, we kind of see there's or the, a slot there on the one side and a tab there on the other side, and those actually fit into 
We've got a little tab on the arm and a little slot on the underside of this arm here. That's where those peg into, so you kind of just got to manipulate everything to make sure that it gets into the right place in, in the inside of the body cavity. Can be a little tricky at times. So, there we go. Okay. So you want the, uh, the folding claw to be on the outside of this side, and then you want the fingers to kind of be like tucked in on the other side. And then that, oh, this just kind of collapses back. And keeps everything together. Just like that. Okay. Now the legs, this is where things, I found that things got a little bit trickier because there's um, there's an additional step in the transformation that it shows it in the instructions. Remember I said step number, what the hell step was it? Step number 27, so this one here. You know, it says, okay, push those in and then it's just got a little diagram here, which is almost impossible to see because you can't see the detail because the colors are so dark. But basically what it means is looking at the underside of his treads here, you can kind of see like when you try and peg that in, it, it's, on, it's on an angle. So what you do is you actually push that in like that. And what that does is it gives you the extra clearance you need or the extra um, distance to peg that. And then again, there's a slot and a tab that connect in together on the treads. But by sliding in this piece of tread here, it makes it so much easier to connect all that stuff together. Same thing on the other side, so you push it in all the way. You connect the tab together. And there you go. You now have that part done. Now the final piece is folding out these um, hinges on his sort of shin armor. And they're on a double hinge. And again, they're just a friction fit. So I think it's this one, that if you're not careful. Um, I'm not sure. One of them. Anyway, one of them popped off. But again, it's just an easy, easy pop on off, just like that, that piece on the back of his leg. And then those kind of just tuck in there. And there you have Megatron in his Cybertronian tank mode with his face sticking out there going, er, I'm a tank and look at me driving around shooting stuff. So it's <laughs> the visible head thing. I, <laughs> it would have been so much better if they didn't have that. I mean, it looks to me, it just looks silly, but I mean, he's not going to be in tank mode on display on my shelf. He's going to be in robot mode all the time, but it is a faithful representation of what he looked like in the movie. Cause in the movie, he did kind of have his face sticking out the front of his tank. So there you go. I mean, it's, it's nice. It's a cool looking Cybertronian tank. Um, you know, um, it, it delivers on movie accuracy, so no complaints there. Um, but again, he would look, even in alt mode, he would look so much better if he had some shiny paint on him. So I'm really looking forward to, to getting this guy repainted and I'll be sure to post a, a paint overhaul video of what the final results look like so that you all can take a look at it and, uh, let me know what you think, but uh, I'm, I'm definitely excited to, to get this guy repainted. So we'll see what happens. So yeah, that's my uh, look at the new Studio Series Voyager class Megatron. And like I haven't said it enough in this video, I really dig this guy. I'm glad I've got it. Um, you know, it's the perfect addition to my movie shelf. It fills a, an early movie Megatron hole that I've had in my shelf for a while. You know, I've had the Dark of the Moon and, and Last Night Megatrons for a while, but I never really had any of the earlier ones. So I'm really glad that I've got this guy now and that his, um, his appearance, especially in bot mode, is so movie accurate. I really dig it. So yeah, that's my look. Um, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Um, you know, feel free to uh, you know like, subscribe, uh, share. I would appreciate any of that stuff. Comment uh, if you've got any thoughts. Um, would love to hear it. Um, otherwise, uh, thanks very much for tuning in, and I will hopefully be back at you soon with another video. Thanks very much. Take it easy.